Bless me, the Lord that binds our hearts in Christian love. The unity of heart and mind is Lord to the heart above. We share our mutual woes, our mutual burdens bear, and often for each other flows the sympathizing tear. From sorrow, toil, and pain, and sin we shall be free, and perfect love and friendship breathe through all eternity. God. Come, let us worship God. Come, let us worship God. Come, let us worship God. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. To the love of God. To the love of God. God's peace be with you. Welcome to our online service for Sunday, August the 1st. Our service this morning begins with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider. Help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I ask that you please hold the prayer of the day within your heart. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us in all adversity and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 22. So then remember that one time you Gentiles by birth called down the circumcision by those who called the circumcision a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no help and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with his commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who are far off and peace to those who are near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens and the saints and also members of the household of God. Build upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as a cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom also are built together spirituality into a dwelling place for God. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. For God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe. Gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took rebellious paths. Through their sins they were afflicted. They loathed all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You sent forth your word and healed them and rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of your deeds with shouts of joy. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. 
When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hub Uster Hughes is a, was a Jesuit priest in the Netherlands. In the early 50s, he became inspired by Che Guevara, who said that churches had the potential to transform the social structure of society. From that time on, Uster Hughes combined his priesthood with political activism and became an advocate for cooperation among various denominations for the betterment of the world. Uster Hughes became a critic of some of the church's doctrines and liturgies. Of course, that did not sit well with some of those in the higher up in the church hierarchy, and it led to him being dismissed from the Jesuit order in the late 60s. Still, Uster Hughes remained a prolific theologian and poet. A number of his poems have become the basis for hymns that various denominations sing, including here at LCOS. His work entitled, What is This Place Where We Are Meeting?, provided the basis for composer Marty Hoggins' hymn, Gather Us In. Usteryus wrote, What is this place where we are meeting? Only a house, the earth its floor. Walls and a roof sheltering people, windows for light and open door. Yet it becomes a body that lives when we gather here and know our God is near. Both of these works are about belonging, having a place where everyone is welcome, a place where there is unity in diversity, where there is love and peace born out through service to others. Hodgins' hymn offers a vision of an inclusive community, a community of hope where people can bring their own hopes and dreams, and share them openly with others. It is a community that provides a sheltering home for the lost and forsaken, and for the blind and the lame. To Hodgin, we each have an identity in this community as we respond to the call of our baptism. Paul's letter to the Ephesians was written near the end of the first century, 60 or 70 years after Christ's death and resurrection, a time when the church was facing division among its members. At the time, the church in that region was growing, attracting people from diverse backgrounds who were drawn to the promise that was offered by the gospel. When the letter was written, most people who were attracted to this growing movement were Gentiles. In fact, so many Gentiles were becoming part of the church that people with a Jewish heritage, like those who were present a few decades earlier, were becoming a minority. So there was obviously some hard feelings between the two groups. The author of the letter was afraid that the Jewish roots of the movement were at risk of being forgotten. And to Paul, this also meant that the church community was at risk of forgetting or even losing its radical roots of not fully living into the promise that they had and that we have received through Christ's death and resurrection. In this letter, Paul calls on the Ephesians to simply remember, to remember where they came from, 
to remember the foundation of love on which their faith community is based. To remember the grace they have received. He reminds the Gentiles of the time when they were considered the outcasts because they were among the physically uncircumcised. The Jewish members were also reminded that in many ways they too were considered outcasts. People who were segregated through oppression and through violence, whose beliefs and practices set them apart from the community. Through Christ's death and resurrection, Paul reminds the Ephesians that they have received a new life in Christ. God has gathered them into a community, into an assembly, into a family. Today, Paul writes, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He is our peace. Through their shared experiences and histories, Paul hoped that the Ephesians could begin to tear down the walls, the barriers that were being erected between the peoples between parts of the faith community, and then work toward creating one humanity unified in Christ and living in peace. Paul is speaking about a new humanity formed around and through Christ. The cross has put, a de put hostilities to death. It's an aspiration that remains relevant centuries after this letter was first heard by that assembly. In discussing today's passage, theologian Israel Kamut Zandu wrote that the theological notion of Jesus as, the, as an embodiment of peace should invite Christians to be agents of peace, love, reconciliation, and compassion. The entire gospel message, message of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is given meaning in the letter to the Ephesians. Kemut Zandu says that the letter is the fulfillment of the gospel message. If we truly live into our identity as children of God, into our identity as a faith-filled community that no barrier can be allowed to exist. Our language can't be one of privilege and exclusion. It has to be one, a language of inclusion. Divisions such as intolerance, contempt, or even pride are the product of sin. Because sin seeks to divide. Sin seeks to isolate us from one another to keep us from gathering as a community, to keep us from sharing the promise of the gospel in the world. Through grace, we are called to seek out the stranger, the other, to gather them in, provide support, protection, and healing, to listen to their histories, to hear their stories, and make those stories part of our stories and become part of their story. Through God's actions, diverse family histories become a shared history. Service becomes a shared service. Through unity, empathy, and compassion, all become strengths. A healing balm, a share, our shared voices become stronger and more compelling. Peace and love Mark our shared lives together. Remember the words of Uster uses peace. Yet it becomes a body that lives when we are gathered here and know our God is near. In short, reconciliation. A reconciliation that ultimately leads to unity to a holy dwelling place for God that isn't contained within walls, but that is carried within our hearts to the world. 
Through this love, we can find peace. Because, as Paul wrote, Christ is our peace. Amen. Our service continues with the prayers of intercession. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. You call your church to be the body of Christ. Awaken all the baptized to the gifts you provide for carrying out the work of ministry. Where the church is divided, knit us together and restore the unity of the faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You command the clouds above and cause the wind to blow in the heavens. Watch over deserts and wilderness places. Regenerate rainforests. Defend species at risk of the extinction and strengthen the work of conservation organizations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill those who govern with patience when confronted with grievances and perseverance in seeking what promotes the well-being of the community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You draw near to all who cry out for help. Feed those who are hungry, reassure those who are despairing, and accompany those who are imprisoned. 
Rain down the true bread from heaven that gives life to the world. Today, we pray especially for Mary, Laura, Karen, Peter, Tyson, Glenn, Jake, Klaus, Joyce, Roseanne, Audrey, Helen, as well as all those we name before you either silently or out loud. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You receive all who come seeking a sign of grace. Make this congregation and all communities of faith places of hospitality for those who are accustomed to rejection. To those who have felt excluded here or elsewhere, prepare us to welcome them in the name of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we have since the pandemic has made its presence known within the congregations, we share a sign of peace using sign language. So if you place your hands like this and then slide them as if you're in prayer, then you sweep out, and then you bring them back so your thumbs are touching, and open palms. And the response is with your pinky and your thumb out. So it is, peace be with you, and also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another.
Because we belong to God, we are bold to pray in the words our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive into your hearts and into your lives the blessings of our Lord. The blessing of God who provides for us and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Lord, remember us in, the, in your kingdom and teach us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, take my thy kingdom come, thy will be trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom.